All right, it's past time for some stock picks. However, given the markets are still volatile, I'm going to give you a tried and true stock, one that I've talked about before, but therein lies one of the keys of investing. If a company you like does not have a good stock price, just be patient, as sooner or later it will have an attractive price. And I'm talking about Kimberly Clark Corp, which has an enviable portfolio of brands that have a deep brand loyalty for customers. Kimberly Clark doesn't have a food business, but it does have a variety of products for adults, men, women, children, and babies. With a diversified base, its products are sold in 175 countries. So, let's take a look. Kimberly Clark saw above average growth during the worst of the pandemic. However, with more normalized growth, the company hasn't seen a steep decline like others. In fact, Kimberly Clark recently raised its dividend. That increase marked the 50th consecutive year of dividend growth, and that qualifies Kimberly Clark as a dividend king. And there are only about 40 or so companies with the required five decades of dividend growth to gain entrance into this group. Right now, the dividend is about 3.35%, or nearly three times the average yield of the market index. And the current yield also compares well with its historical average yield of 3.2% since 2012. So, let's go to our charts. So we're now looking at a 20-year monthly chart on Kimberly Clark, and as you can see in the upper left, the symbol is KMB. And for disclosure purposes, I do not own any shares of Kimberly Clark at this time. Now, a couple of things here looking at this price chart, you can see from 2003, perhaps better, from 2009, a decent overall growth rate on the way up. Now, a couple of other things that I want you to take a look at are these uh, double tops here and then the sell-off. And you go back here, you see a couple of double tops and the sell-off here. Now, at this point, we've had a spike up there in mid-2020. The stock came down here, but it's been trading, say, in this channel for the last uh, year and a half or so. So that's going to be somewhat interesting once we take a look at the oscillators. I think you're going to find a divergence. So let's go to the oscillators. Moving down here into volume, not going to tell us too much. It looks decent. And now into the MAC. And here we are with that divergence with the price trading in that channel sideways more or less. There is a lot of volatility, but sideways more or less. Here you can see that the MAC, the fast line, topped out here in mid-2020 and then came down relatively steeply down here to the zero line and is now starting to bottom and base just barely. But I think it's occurring once you see these other oscillators. Moving here into the histogram, you can definitely see that run on the way down here, the bottoming and basing, and it's been improving for quite some time. It doesn't quite show in the price chart yet, though. So moving here into the price rate of change, same thing. You can see that move, bottoming and basing had that uh, negative spike at that point, but that's over with. And now it looks like we're heading on up. We're over that zero or midline, so it is strengthening. Same thing here with the RSI, definitely coming on down, bottoming and basing with that sawtooth thing. We're above that 50 or midline. We're at a moderate 54.72, but for the most part, you can see that we didn't have that downdraft in the RSI or a lot of the other oscillators as we did say in 2018 and certainly back here in 2008 and 2009. Even though the market feels pretty bad, this oscillator here shows that we've hugged that 50 or midline for quite some time and I think it's strengthening. Going down here into the stochastics, you can see that uh, the top up there, 
the downdraft down here, that negative spike here late 2021. But since then, we've been on our way up. We're above that 50 or midline with a stochastic. So I think things are starting to gain some steam. Here, the same thing with Williams, definitely bottomed and base. And actually, the Williams already ran up into that overbought territory. It did pull back pretty hard, but a bounce back on up not quite to that oversold territory but I think we're gonna get there so the Williams is telling you things have improved back up here to the price chart well we could see from the price chart that that negative bottom here in early 2022 came at that there I'd like to get that price but simply up here it's not too bad especially for that yield that divergence going sideways with the oscillators heading on up tells me that we might make a move and if we break out of that channel line that top channel line then up up we go at least that's my opinion now always study the fundamentals and for today that's chew dog charts Thank you.